Oh, hello and welcome to our continuing round, educational rounds here at Seclair where we attempt to bring uh, something that you could integrate into your lives, some type of knowledge, some type of action, some type of behavior which would enhance your health and wellness, your personal spiritual uh, health and wellness in your life. Uh, my name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be I'm Alex. I'm a PA student from Duquesne University. And on my right? I'm Ashley. I'm an art therapy intern from Seton Hill University. And once again, we're joined by a very special guest via what I call magic over the internet. Uh, Nancy Fitzgerald, thank you so much for joining us again, Nancy. My pleasure. In our last podcast, Nancy gave us a little bit of her background, her philosophy, the moment of clarity in her life where she chose between pleasure and joy, and thankfully for us, joy won out. Uh, she talked to us about making conscious decisions in her life and how to make them. And the particular method that she used, what she found in her life was something called A Course in Miracles. Could you tell us what A Course in Miracles is for those who uh, perhaps are unfamiliar with it? It's actually a um, book at this point, and um, it came from um, a voice that was heard by Helen Shookman and uh, her boss at um, Columbia Medical School, where they were both um, psychotherapists and professors uh, helped her bring that voice um, to the world he he did the typing and she did she took the messages and the shorthand and every morning they went early to work and he would help type it and, and put it um, in place it took seven years for her to receive all of it it's a text it's a 365 workbook one a day um, workbook lessons and um, in addition, there's a manual for teacher, clarification of terms, a psychotherapy pamphlet, and a song of prayer. So it's more than a thousand pages of a course, um, basically a teaching for how to change your perspective so that you can find peace. The purpose, the goal of the, the course is actually to help each of us learn how to, to find and choose peace or joy or happiness whatever it is that you want to call it, but it's basically that calm, satisfied, loving place to be. That sounds wonderful. And of course, there are many, uh, there are always detractors for every every particular uh, message out there. They look at the, they look at the medium, they look at the messenger. However, what uh, what impresses me about this Course in Miracles is the message itself, Nancy. And from what I see that... Uh, Helen and William Thetford were able to put down uh, on paper and get across to people had a whole lot to do with uh, with basically about it's about forgiveness could you could you talk to us about that yes um, forgiveness is um, the mechanism that I use to open myself to being able to forgive myself so it's it's all about um, a relationship between me and anybody else that I'm with and when I forgive someone, I'm able to overlook the kinds of things that are there and actually see the truth of them, which is always innocent and pure and um, holy. And then that allows me to make an opening so that I can forgive myself for the same kinds of things. Absolutely. So. Uh, from from what I understand, uh, some of the thought is there that resentment happens in what they call the ego world. However, it doesn't happen in the spiritual, and it's about seeing the spark of uh, the divine in others. Yeah, the way I imagine it is that there's actually two two thought systems, and only two, which makes it an easy choice. One is the thought system of fear. If I am feeling resentment, anxiety, depression, um, attack, anger, any of those kind of feelings, I'm in the ego fear thought system. And then the other thought system, which is kind of like a quantum leap away from fear, is the love thought system. And so when I'm, when I'm happy, joyful, um, peaceful, um, calm, 
then I'm operating from love and in love. And to get from one to the other, I have to make a distinct choice to leave, leave fear and go to love. And while you're talking, again, we keep getting back to that choice word, the choice word, and the fact that you have developed conscious choice. I, I find that absolutely fascinating, which is something that as a therapist, I'm attempting to have people understand that they do have choices. Of course, in Miracles says that um, the power of choice, our free will, is our last um, and only true power. That's, that's absolutely amazing. And for those of you listening today, that's something, if you take nothing away from today, my hope is you would take away that you indeed do have a choice in your life. You have a choice in your life. The, the self-defeating words, the, uh, the have tos, the shoulds, you needs to, you must, you want to. Uh, I'm so much interested in that. And also where they talk about, Nancy, uh, the difference between the world of perception, which they talk about being a world of our own interpretation and often illusion, versus the world of knowledge which comes from the divine. Yes, it's another way to describe the thought system of fear or love. Um, the Course uses the word perception consistently as something that I do primarily from my ego and often by projection. If there's something in me that, that's uncomfortable and that I don't like guilt or something like that, I might project it out onto someone else because it's so uncomfortable for me that I need to get it out of me. And so somebody out there has to be wrong. <laughs> um, and then the, the other word that parallels perception is knowledge. And again, A Course in Miracles uses knowledge consistently to mean um, knowing from experience, actually having it shown to you by making a choice to, uh, to go toward love and, and being still and essentially allowing wisdom to come to you and then you know it it's it you don't you don't really go study it you might study how to prepare yourself to be quiet <laughs> or to be still or to be open so that you can hear it but you don't really learn this kind of knowledge from book kind of stuff no this comes from uh, this comes from action and effort and i find many parallels between uh, what the Course in Miracles talk is about and the 12-step recovery world where I'm from, which involves a change in your thoughts and your actions and some radical acceptance and understanding that it's not so much as what can be changed in the world as what can be changed in you and your attitudes. Yes, uh, yes, those exactly. Actions, those action type of steps that uh, we take where we where we take a personal inventory and we actively seek not only to forgive others but however the main thing is to uh, accept uh, forgiveness for ourselves and quite often in 12-step recovery uh, there's two purposes it's to fit yourself to be of maximum service to the creator and to your fellow man there's many people in our Course in Miracles groups who are um, graduates of the 12-step process and in fact uh, a, a lot of them would say that they consider A Course in Miracles the next step after um, Alcoholics Anonymous and so um, it, it, it does dovetail very well there's a lot of preparation that's done in the 12-step program that then um, moves to A Course in Miracles which expands on it even more gives you um, deeper, more congruent um, tools. And what I'm what I what I like is what you when they talk about is shifting your perspective from the physical to to the spiritual and that we're not really paying attention to who we are. Well we come we come to know that we're actually the way our creator made us which is true and innocent and perfect. And so we, when we know that, we live from that space. And you don't have to pay so much attention to it because how do you have to attend to perfection except share it, <laughs> extend it? So how do you incorporate in this life? Let's say a neophyte comes in and is interested in what we're talking about today. 
uh, where would where how would you direct a person to get involved in the Course in Miracles if they have nowhere to start from? Well, the easiest, most direct way is to get a copy of the book and 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 start in somewhere. And where you start is actually up to you. You can start with the text, or you can start with the workbook lessons, or you can thumb around and see what what's there. If you um, like or would want some other support, there are listings online of local Course in Miracles groups that are um, ongoing and regular so that you can join with other people who are um, doing this. There's many, many um, teachers who are now providing their materials online by internet, just like you watch YouTube's videos. There's um, lots of teachers who do that. The one that I am familiar with here and what brought me to Massachusetts is the Teachers of God Foundation and the 40-Day Transformation Program, which is uh, an online delivered program that just completed. Um, it, it starts January 1st or May 1st or August 1st. And for 40 days, you get um, a written lesson, a video message, and some guidance on how to essentially jump in with both feet and then you're still directed back ultimately to the book, to the text, and to the workbook lessons to really be grounded. But in truth, it's said, and it, I'm sure it's true, that if, if you actually fully received and, and knew any single lesson in the workbook, you'd be done. So it's <laughs> could, you, could you talk to us a little bit about a couple of the lessons, what they involve, what they ask you to do? Well, um, the one for today is um, God is the love in which I forgive. So it gives us a few paragraphs of introduction and then it, um, it basically says um, that you would close your eyes and repeat that idea to yourself and then you would say, you would look around in your thought system for anyone that you feel you haven't forgiven for, for any reason. And there's no degree of forgiveness. It, it basically says anyone that you think you don't like <laughs> is, could be someone that you need to forgive or, or want to forgive. And then what you do is you say, God is the love in which I forgive you. Um, Peter or whomever you are speaking of or thinking of so you say that to yourself and you do that for a few minutes Look in your thoughts for who's there and then you say God is the love in which I forgive myself and then you then you repeat or, or say the kind some of the other kind of statements that support that like I'm a child of God I can't be guilty or um, God is the love in which I'm blessed and it it basically gives you a five-minute practice period, which it asks you to do three times a day. And then it suggests that any time during the day that you notice that maybe there's someone that you don't feel like you're in, in a good relationship with, that you can say this silently in your mind to them and um, let it do its thing. And it takes active involvement on your part, the participation in the action and effort in doing this, not just mouthing words. Uh, I'm we're big believers in. Uh, there was a quite often I'll take the students to uh, with different faith-based type of uh, organizations like uh, mosques, synagogues, Hindu temples, twelve-step recovery meetings, uh, and particularly the the Jewish rabbis have a have a method of 100 blessings a day. And it's easy for me to bless uh, my son or my daughter or my grandchildren or my cat. Well, not one of my cats, not the other one. Uh, how, <laughs> however, it's, it's, it's a little bit more difficult for me to bless someone who has wronged me, someone who I have a deep resentment against. Uh, when I, when I ask, uh, when I ask uh, God, to, I wish them well and I forgive them. I wish you well. I offer you love. I offer you forgiveness. We we attempt to do that, and what I'm hearing is uh, much of the same. Yes, and forgiveness actually has a little different um, meaning in A Course in Miracles in that we're taught gradually until it tends to be able to sink in that essentially um, since, since we've made up most of this world, that there really is not anything to forgive, that you're, you're basically 
aiming to be able to see the truth in every other person and in yourself, in which case all the craziness just dissolves in the light. Yes, I was interested. It said that uh, forgiveness doesn't exist uh, in heaven. It only exists uh, here on earth. So could you share with us a little bit about uh, what meaningful benefits had in your life, Nancy? What, what real tangible things have you seen? Well, I've, I've gotten much better at um, allowing uh, guidance, not, not being the one who thinks I have to be in control, being aware that when I think I have to take care of everything by myself, that I'm essentially trying to usurp God's role, which is pretty silly when I frame it that way. And um, for instance, when my mother needed to go into uh, a nursing home, I said at one point, Spirit, I have no idea how to to get mom from home to another care facility, but I, I'm really in need of having this happen now. And it turned out that it, it, it went extremely smoothly and easily. My sister was at the house the day that we got a call from a waiting list for um, one of the houses, one of the assisted living locations. Um, we were scheduled to go see a different one that day so we were both able to go together to both of those places and the one that um, we ended up choosing which was the one that said there was an opening um, told us that um, there there was an opening right that day and and my mother had gone to that location for um, senior daycare so she was actually physically already there the the administrator basically told me, even though it's Friday, you don't have to come get your mom. She can just stay here. Go home and bring her clothes here, and we'll do the paperwork on Monday. So I would never had to do the thing that, in my mind, was the most horrible, which was to leave my mother for the last time anywhere that wasn't going to be her house. That, was, that had already been done as though I were leaving him for, her for daycare. Later, one of the aides told the administrator that my mother had kept saying all day long, I'm staying, where's my room? I'm staying here, where's my room? So it, it just felt very um, guided and much easier than if I had worked my usual too hard to uh, <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> so could you end us up with, what is, a, what is a day like in the life of Nancy Fitzgerald? What is a day like? <laughs> Well, I'm um, up and on the couch by 7.30 in the morning where I co-facilitate a morning conference call for A Course in Miracles. We do um, a workbook lesson together and we read from the text. Um, we started it more than a year ago and we've been all the way through the text and all the way through the workbook lessons once. A lot of people come and go. Um, some of them don't stay too long. Um, some of the people who went all the way through last year are still with us and we've picked up newbies. So there's some experienced people and there's some people who are starting new. Um, I would then usually uh, sit at my computer and connect with whomever I'm connecting with. I have a pen pal who's um, been released from prison that I keep up with daily. I uh, keep in touch with a couple friends from Florida who have um, special needs and occasionally am in contact with them. I may um, read something that's of interest to me. I just finished um, The Afterlife of Billy Finger about that's a, based on a true story uh, where um, a brother, a, a bad boy brother gave his sister proof of his being able to connect with her from the other side. And it was all documented in the book. Um, what else? Uh, one night, uh, I go to a, a senior yoga class once a week. I, um, I co-facilitate a Sunday noon Course in Miracles group live at the local Unity Church. I go, to, I go for myself to the Friday morning Course in Miracles group that um, Lisa Natoli and Bill Free conduct nearby. I might pick up um, an, an, a special seminar or visit. I've been able to see in person Esther Hicks, John Mundy, who teaches A Course in Miracles, Carol Howe, who wrote Bill Thetford's um, autobiography. 
So I have time and opportunity to choose those kinds of um, activities. Do you have people you love in your life, Nancy? Absolutely. Do you have people that love you? I'm sure I do. Then you indeed are a fortunate woman. Yeah. Any uh, final any thoughts uh, that you have, Alex, that you'd like to direct to Nancy? I was wondering what you found to be one of the more difficult lessons of the course for you to get through and, and act on. I, I think for me, one of the things that's still in, in the leading edge of what I'm working on is the idea that um, whatever the irritation or the agitation or the upset, it's really, it's all basically about me. That my job is to see the other person and say, you're my perfect savior, I release you. In other words, now, now bring it back to me. So what, it is, what is it about me that believes or... Um, Mis misbelieves whatever I'm projecting onto that person. So if I'm thinking that they are um, isolated, for instance, you know, if if I'm if I'm criticizing somebody else and I realize, oh, <laughs> oh, it's really not about them; it's about me. Then I can bring it back to me and look at it and think, okay, I've just said about this person this, this, and this. What about that fits me? What? What about me is isolating? What am I still hiding or keeping separate? And so the, the last lesson for me is, is still to, to bring it back to me and allow those misbeliefs which get in my way to be undone. Thank you. Ashley? Um, thank you, Nancy, for sharing. I'm just curious about... Um, I guess the people that do do this miracle course, are the age ranges older, young, wide, fast? Um, it does tend to be older people, probably 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, there's a few younger people. Uh, maybe those people have a, a group that has more young people than the ones I tend to go to. but. It is. It does tend to be a range. I think it takes. It often takes a certain amount of um, pain and life experience, and sometimes hitting bottom mm -hmm. to get to the place where you think you need anything like this. Until then, you just sort of go ahead and do it until you can't do it. Um, so I, I think that it, that tends to bias it a little bit older. Um, it it can be a mixed group, but it's often. Um, more age biased and, and in the groups that I'm in they tend to be fairly homogeneous um, on online though on the on the online access courses um, it's actually got an international reach so you can have people in Guatemala and Australia and England and Canada at the same time and so in some ways you get a conversation on the Facebook the private Facebook page that's more um, uh, mixed up you know, with, with a variety, more variety of perspective. In 12-step recovery, Nancy, we call that beaten into a sense of reasonableness, not necessarily a physical beating, uh, but in a st prepare yourself, be in a state of reasonableness to have honesty, open-mindedness, and the willingness to try. Yep. Any further thoughts? So, Nancy, how would, uh, do you have a website? How would somebody uh, contact you? Um, I actually don't at this point have a website, but um, if they wanted to send me an email, they could do it at um, n meyer m e y e r fitz f i t z at yahoo.com. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today, Nancy. You are a delight. And as mm -hmm. always, uh, we give a uh, free prescription at the every at the end of every podcast. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables, uh, unplug your television, perhaps be in recovery from the news, and take up fishing. Uh, and for a truly mindful experience, we ask that you fish without bait, a lifetime without definitive expectations. Uh, until then, your assignment, as always, is to do a kindness for yourself and a kindness to others. Until then, thank you so much for joining us.